scaling me. I, yeah, I was terrified. Don't fall, please. <laughs> So it is almost four o'clock, which means that I have been on Pitocin for just about 12 hours. Um, contractions are very regular, like every two to three minutes, but I'm not really feeling anything. Like I, I feel it, like I feel the pressure, but I don't feel like pain. Yeah, those are looking really regular. Baby looks good. I feel like honestly the worst thing about the situation right now is is like a headache that I have and the fact that I'm very hungry and uh, that's kind of about it just sleepy but yeah, I'm, ha I'm having a contraction right now but it's just yeah it just doesn't really hurt and you'd think it would at 12 hours on Pitocin. Unfortunately, because my bag has ruptured for two months now, they don't want to do too many cervical checks or anything because they don't want to introduce any bacteria into the womb. Don't blame them. But at the same time, I'm kind of very curious where I'm at as far as progress goes because it's been one, two, three, four, five, about five hours since I was one centimeter dilated. So I'm really, really curious where we're at and I know they said they wouldn't you know rupture the rest of the waters until at least four centimeters but they also don't want to check so I'm like well how are we gonna how do we know where I'm at you know so yeah I don't know this kind of happened with Kaya last time where I really felt like oh I don't need the epidural I don't like it doesn't hurt at all and then they broke my waters artificially and then it really hurt. So it's probably just gonna be the same thing until my water breaks again or they have to artificially break the rest of it. So really not wanting them to do, she said something about doing something called a, a pit rest where they stop the Pitocin for like a half hour and then they restart it but they generally do that after 24 hours. And I'm like, oh God, I don't want to be, I don't want to be doing this for 24 hours. So I don't know. Maybe they should just do another check just for the hell of it. What do you think? I'm getting there. <laughs> it's been a long day. Yeah. I don't know. I feel like. Eventually, they're just gonna, they might see how much you've expanded. Yeah. And then maybe they go in there and try to pop, pop what's ever left. Yeah. And maybe that's what causes the thing. Do the scan or the uh, ultrasound to see how much water you have left. Yeah, that's true. So. I could have more or less. Well, I'm assuming I would have more because it's cushioning what's going on, yeah. obviously, so. <laughs> I just worry with the way I'm feeling, we're gonna be here for like days. You know what I mean? <laughs> what was that like watching 
watching me go through it was that. Like, oh, you're uh, doing good. You're doing good. Freaking kid. I didn't see that angle. I just saw her arm just doing this. Yeah. Like, where is it? <laughs> yeah. I don't know what she was saying when she was like trying to pull it and then get it in and remove her finger at the same time. Like, yeah. Oh my god. So now there's pain. Because they, they placed a Foley bulb. They offered me fentanyl, but I just, I didn't want anything to affect the baby. So I said no to it. And holy mother of God. I'm like sweating. Now I'm very crampy. So hopefully, hopefully this will move things along because, ooh. Oh, the baby's moving in. I was like, why is it moving? What's your thing? <laughs> um, right, right. After five hours, I was only two centimeters. So they were like, ah, you're maxed out on Pitocin, and it's been five hours, so we're going to up your Pitocin beyond the maximum and then give you a Foley bulb. Manually dilate. So... not fun. I don't recommend doing that without medication. Alright, after 20 minutes of having the Foley bulb in, it fell out. So, must have manually dilated rather quickly because they said it would take an hour, but it was only 20 minutes. And... Um, we were waiting an hour just to see if it dilates further. Um, but we are almost fully maxed out because I guess you can go above 24 with Pitocin. Like, that's the max, but then you can basically go up to 30. And they don't want me to go up to 30 and just hang out there because at that point it can become less effective and other side effects that I don't want to think about. <laughs> so we are talking about breaking the rest of my water to speed things along. I'm nervous about it, but they did do an ultrasound and he is fully engaged in the pelvis, so no risk of prolapse or anything with his cord. But they think this is going to be what moves things along, so I think I think we're gonna do it. Yeah. So, um, it's been a whirlwind. Last, how many days? Two, two days? It's been a while. <laughs> it's been a while. Um, I'm being discharged right now. My son is not being discharged. We'll probably go into more detail, but I'm um, just gonna take one more vial of colostrum up to him. Gold! Liquid gold! And then, uh, and then we'll be heading out of the hospital for my first time in, what, 64 days or something? Yeah. <laughs> so, Let's say 65, I like five. <laughs> He was supposed to be born on my 60th day in the hospital, but he was born on my 61st day in the hospital. So, here we are. Let's go. Yeah, strong. Okay. We have officially gotten all the paperwork in order to be discharged without our son today, but we'll be back tomorrow morning um, for a breastfeeding consult again because he wasn't he wasn't ready to take take to it. So um, I've just been pumping, but um, yeah. Why don't I get into the nitty gritty details when we're on the road? <laughs> I love your outfit, Kim. Oh, thank you. <laughs>
Yeah, uh, your wife's gonna sit here, so you should get rid of your Cheetos. This, this is a bizarre feeling. <laughs> Well, since it's going to take us two hours and nine minutes to get home, I may as well tell the tale. But first, Starbucks. Okay, this vlog is all over the place, just like my brain, so it's fitting. You can't envision a wonderful, beautiful birth vlog, <laughs> um, you know, and then have that go perfectly, especially when things don't go perfectly. So where did we leave off? I think I left off where we're like gonna wait to to artificially break my water until I got to four centimeters or something. And well that didn't happen. I barely got past three centimeters after the Foley bulb. And they were like, well it's been a long time. We need to speed things up. We need to artificially rupture your water. And I was concerned about, you know, getting infection and everything. I reluctantly said yes. And then it was hours and hours later that they rechecked me after my waters were broken. In a lot of pain. A lot of pain. It finally, finally started feeling pain. And, uh... I had only progressed to a four, and all of us were just like, oh, <laughs> you know. I don't even know how, how many hours that was at that point, but it was a very long, long time. Just for the record, this was a 30-hour induction, and I know that's not, like, insanely long, and I'm sure people have had longer inductions and longer labors than that, but... Considering Kaya's was pretty dang short and pretty easy, um, this was hard for me. It was hard on all of us, wasn't it? <laughs> I, like, <laughs> lost track of... I knew it was nighttime, though. It was definitely after 8 p.m. at that point. My Pitocin was maxed out to 24, and they contacted my OB, and he was like, all right, we're just gonna keep going higher higher up to 30 and I was just sitting there thinking like if I'm only at a four right now and I have only six more times of increase oh wait three more times of increasing because they increase it by two right mm -hmm. so I had only three more times of increasing Pitocin so I just thought like there's no way I'm gonna I'm gonna max out to 30 like right away and I'm not gonna I'm not gonna be fully dilated and then I just had this fear that that they're gonna section me and the baby's gonna be in distress and all sorts of like anxieties. While this is all going on, all these anxieties, I'm having horrendous pain because we all know that uh, induction contractions hurt like a mofo. I love that Pitocin. Yeah, super, super painful. Like. I wouldn't even call it a 10 on the pain scale, to be honest, because I know worse pain out there exists, but it's definitely up there for me. Probably some of the worst pain I've experienced. I think they ended up maxing you at 28. 28? Yeah. yeah. At that ended. point, I was gone. <laughs> so I called, and I was like, I need the epidural, you know, I was calling in early, I got, you know, before the shaking that you experience, I was like, all right, I'm gonna, I'm just gonna call it now and maybe my body will, will relax and then I'll, you know, be able to progress a bit better. So I called it, but it was like everybody that was giving birth asked for it all at the same time. So it took a very long time for anesthesia to get there and, and to actually place the epidural. So by then I was just in a lot of pain and shaking and ugh. I don't even want to think about it. So then the epidural was placed, and then my night nurse placed me on my side for an hour, and then my other side, was it half hour? Half hour each side? Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, so. no, like an hour. She, okay. I don't know, she, she swapped it. She started off, it was like an hour, an hour, and then she cut it down to like 30 minutes. 
So okay, you definitely were like like a nice steak. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she was flipping me from yes. my left side to my right side to sort of let the epidural take effect. It did not, however. It failed. Um, I'm not sure if they. I just wasn't given the proper dose or something, but I felt everything going on in my uterus, and the only thing was a tiny bit of, like, numbness in my legs, but I could still move them and and do everything. So you can imagine the pain got even worse. And I called him and I was like, I, I don't know why like it's not working, but um, you gotta do something, you know? So they gave me, I forget what they called it. It started with a B, where they just put some directly into my back. Blast attack. <laughs> I don't know why I wanna call it a bullion or something. Anyway, I don't, Boom, I don't know. I forget what they called it, but they put like extra, like directly into my spine and Oof. it was too much. So we went from ineffective to too much. And this was where one of the scariest experiences of my life began. I've never had any kind of surgery before. I've never been put out for anything. I've never been paralyzed before until that day. I was paralyzed from the waist down by the uh, extra medication that they put in my epidural. I actually wanted them to take the epidural out. That's how like frightening the experience was for me. I had absolutely no feeling, no ability to move anything. And Cameron had to help the nurse to like move my legs around and, and to change my positions and everything because I just, I couldn't help them. Even with trying to use my arms, I had absolutely no way of moving my lower body. Honestly, yeah. Uh, definitely scaring me. <laughs> I, yeah, I was terrified. I, I had a weird feelings of like, this is permanent. <laughs> I'm never gonna move again. Um, yeah, I couldn't, oh my gosh. I never want to experience that again. Like I would get an epidural again, but maybe not, <laughs> not with that, that guy. <laughs> I feel bad saying that, but my nurse, however, was amazing the best nurse she knew exactly what to do she's like all right we're gonna flip you on this side for one hour and then we're gonna flip you on the other side for an hour and she just kept flipping me with the peanut ball she knew yeah. she knew the positions that i needed to be in and she made sure everything was perfect and you know as comfortable as i could be um despite the situation going on she was incredible i want to like send her flowers for this because um, I thought for sure I was going to be sectioned. I was like, there's no way I'm going to dilate. There's absolutely no way. And then, um, Cameron and my sister-in-law, Lindsay, are sleeping and, and I'm sleeping and, you know, simultaneously waking up in a panic and like, oh God, is it going to happen? Are they going to come in and check me and be like, all right, well, we have to cut you open now. But that was not the case. So what was it? Four something in the morning? Four four fifteen AM, right? Yeah, something like that. Four I just, fifteen. No, I had just gone to bed. Cause I, I just got the couch and I was like around three. And I I think it was after three too. And I was like, ah, okay, I'm I'm falling asleep. I almost threw up in the chair falling asleep. Time for me to <laughs> little stretch switch, out. Yeah, switch yeah. with Lindsay. Yeah, switch with Lindsay. Stretch out and get some rest and we'll pick this back up around, you know, seven, maybe eight. They're dead asleep. Doctor comes in, he's like, hey Stephanie, I'm just gonna check you. And I was like, here we go. Here's the moment. He's gonna tell me we have to rush you to the OR. <laughs> hey, what doctor? One of the... the... One of the resident oh, doctors, yeah. Okay. So he comes in, I feel nothing, of course. And he, I just see his hand go in and I don't feel a thing. And he's like, well, ma'am, you are fully dilated and effaced and I see his head right here. You're ready to push. So this was at 
about 4.15 in the morning, almost 24 hours after Pitocin was started. So I began weeping and the team came, what's wrong? And I was like, I just didn't think I was gonna get there. So then, and so let me jump in, because I was waking up to weeping <laughs> and everybody running around and I'm like, what the hell's going on? <laughs> And I'm hearing the Were nurses. Scared? Go, well, I was so caught off, and I was like, I gotta get the camera, gotta put this away, <laughs> get this out of their way. And all I hear is the nurse, like, yeah, that's his head right there. And hey, look, you can see it. And I was like, oh my god, you can see it. <laughs> Even then, after they said that, I was still like, um, well, you were so disoriented. I was You're so like, disoriented. Oh. <laughs> I mean, no, part of me was like, I know I'm in the hospital. I know there's a baby, but we're not there yet, right? We're not yeah. there yet. And I keep hearing the head's right there. Look, you can see yeah, the head. You can and see I'm the like, head right there. And I'm like, no. They called my OB because baby was still looking good. OB was there like so quickly. I don't know where the guy lives. He can get there in minutes, like at four in the morning. But he was there and he was just bright and chipper and he's like, hello, let's have a baby. And I was afraid I wasn't gonna be able to push because I couldn't feel anything, but I guess I, I did a good job because Kieran came out at 4.45 in the morning after three minutes of pushing. He did like, coached, coached you for three pushes and then out came the baby. But yeah, there was lots of crying all around. <laughs> That is the story of Kieran's birth. And he was born at 4.45 a.m. on August 16th, 2022. We were wanting him to be born on the 15th, but that didn't happen. He had other ideas. Um, he will be in the NICU. Just have some feeding related stuff we need to work through. And, um, not sure exactly when he'll be coming home, but he needs to pass some more tests before he can be discharged to go home with us. But it, sh it shouldn't be too long. But he's he's doing real well. He's getting stronger every day. So that's, yeah, that's the story. And we're on our way home because they kicked me out after two days. They're like, yeah, sorry. I wish you could stay, but get out of here. <laughs> We don't need you here. I know, I know this vlog was really messy, but so was this whole situation. Not just the birth, but like the whole tail end of this pregnancy has been a wild ride. And uh, I am heading home and going to see my cats for the first time in two months. So uh, look out for that vlog next. So that's gonna be interesting. <laughs> All right, thank you for watching if you made it this far. Um, yeah, see you next time, bye. This perfect little guy.